welcome to Connect Online. It's great to see you, great to be gathered wherever you are, whatever space you're in. Today is a special Youth Sunday for our church family. And uh, if you get a chance uh, after this service to go watch the 9 o'clock service, you'll see the full uh, presentation of all the kids singing and dancing and the celebrations there. We did get a chance to have three of them come and share with us the three graduating seniors, so excited about that. But uh, let's go ahead and lift up some praises as we prepare and, and celebrate. This first song is called Ha Ha Hallelujah, um, and it's just a fun song, and I love the fact that when it comes down to hearing these graduates, it's about the seniors, it's about uh, their relationship with each other and their relationship with God that just brings us joy and comfort and hope. So let's just sing the uh, You Make Me Happy, You Make Me Glad, and then we'll just jump into the song. You make me happy, you make me glad. You make me happy, you make me glad. You make me happy, you make me glad. You're the best friend I ever you make me glad you make me happy you make me glad you make me happy you make me glad you're the best friend I ever on camera right now, but it's just great to see them and great to have some of their parents here as well. 
Um, you know, this has been a tough year. The theme that they chose, the seniors picked, is overcome. And what a fitting uh, uh, name for today's service. And the next song we want to sing is a song that reminds us that God's goodness continues to be with us. Um, you know, as we're thinking about the seniors, thinking about their sophomore and junior years, I'm sure they were thinking, am I going to make it through? Can I overcome these challenges? And then the pandemic hits, and so so much to overcome. And, and yet we, re we are reminded in this song that God's goodness is always with us, that God speaks his love over us. And so even as we uh, sing this song, it's a time to reflect. It's a time to remember that there's a lot of unknown for the seniors going forward as well, that the goodness of God will continue to run after them as well. Sing, I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. And all my days I've been held. breath that 
sing of your goodness and your greatness the way you have been ever present throughout all of these years for us gathered in this time wherever we are and Lord today we remember that you have been faithful throughout all of our seniors lives those who have graduated and Lord we celebrate also that you your love will continue to pursue them and walk with them no matter where they go and so, Lord, we ask that your Holy Spirit would remind us of your goodness even during this time, that you might anoint their hearts and lives, that you would remind them of your faithfulness even as they share of your faithfulness to us. So be glorified. Come, Holy Spirit, and fill this time and be with all who listen and hear in this moment. In your holy and precious name we pray. Amen. Yeah, your goodness is running after me. I had a, a professor in seminary who said the image of that song that comes from Psalm 23, we all know like the CHP, motorcycle cops that chase people down, right? They're waiting when they go by, they chase after them. It's like it's a CHP coming after you, but to do good to you, <laughs> to bless you. God pursues us with God's goodness, and that's what we celebrate in worship. And that's what we are celebrating today. Uh, Aldersgate as a church has this tradition of Youth Sunday. I know someone who visited a couple of years ago and they happened to visit on Youth Sunday and they were so just blown away by the senior sharing and the youth leading the worship service that they came back and, and got involved and they're, they're actually part of our Connect community now. And so I know that this is a, a, a tradition that I really value in our church. Very grateful that Scott Wilmoth is here, our youth director is here. And um, yeah, we actually have some people here. Um, but love the fact that um, we have seniors that are willing to share and to look back on how God has been faithful to them, but also to look forward because this is really a celebration of the next chapter of their life. So we're really grateful for them. Uh, before they come up and share with us, uh, I just want to highlight a couple of things going on in the life of our community. And one is that our VBS starts tomorrow, which is really scary because Pastor Ken and I and Cassandra Eve really got to get ready for our Bible adventures center. But it starts tomorrow. It's Monday through Friday. And we just want to invite you to be praying for VBS. Our youth are helping out. We're actually going to be coming back this afternoon to get our church campus ready for VBS. So you want, want you to be aware of that. Also want to let you know that um, another great part of our, our youth ministry is our mission trips. But mission trips have been impacted by COVID. And so this summer, we're doing something unique. We're doing a mission trip in Tustin. We're actually partnering with the city of Tustin, and our youth have been invited for one week, starting, it's the week of June 28th, to actually lead one of the, the children's programs here in Tustin. And so it's an opportunity to serve, to be on a, a mission trip together, but locally. So if you're interested in that, please let Scott know, um, direct message us, email us, let us know by June 12th, by this Saturday, if you would like to be part of that mission opportunity. Um, also want to let you know that we uh, are doing a book club, and we're inviting anyone who's interested on June 23rd at 7 o'clock to be part of a discussion around a book that's called Barking to the Choir, The Power of Radical Kinship by Father Gregory Boyle, who has a, a, just an amazing ministry uh, in LA. And so that group is gonna gather to discuss that book. And the last thing I wanna mention uh, before our first speaker comes up is that, you know, as Connect, we are, this is a new ministry that started, we only, we met for five months before the pandemic hit. So we're still just trying to build community, 
And so one of the things we're doing is uh, over the summer, we're having gatherings once a month where anyone and everyone's invited. And our next gathering is this Saturday, June 12th, and it is tacos and games at the park. We've got tacos that we're going to be making right there on the spot. And we're just going to have fun and hang out together. So it's this upcoming Saturday from 12 to 3. You can show up anytime. And it's at the park across the street from Pastor Ken and Sonny's place. So it's in Woodbury. And we want to invite you. If you want to come, just direct message us. And we'll, we'll let you know what the address is. But that's this Saturday. Come and enjoy some tacos and hang out together this Saturday from 12 to 3. All right. Well... We have three seniors that are going to share, and they're each, they each picked one scripture verse, so we're not going to read a scripture verse uh, beforehand, but they each picked one verse to go with their sharing, and uh, Ava Kuntz is going to come and share with us first, and then Garrett is going to come, uh, Garrett Wilmoth, and then they're going to sing a song together, and then Grace Conklin is going to come up. So in your homes, let's give a hand together for our seniors, and I want to invite Ava to come on up. Hello, my scripture reading, I, well, I'm Ava, and my scripture reading comes from Philippians 3.13. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. So good morning. As I just mentioned, my name is Ava Kuntz, and I have been attending Aldersgate all my life and have been a member of the youth group since 2014. As you know, our 2021 youth theme Sunday theme is overcoming. It's kind of an obvious choice. We've all experienced a lot of change this past year and we've done a lot of overcoming. We've overcome our loathing of masks in order to keep others safe. We've overcome technology challenges in order to go to school and to stay in touch with our friends and family. We've overcome our tendencies to hoard so everyone has enough toilet paper. It wasn't easy. We missed out on a lot. The seniors, in particular, missed a lot of traditional milestones. Junior prom, first day of senior year, homecoming, winter formal, in-person school. I never thought I would genuinely miss school <laughs> so much. There is no way to say this, but this year sucked. The pinnacle of our educational experience was snatched away by a global pandemic. But if I'm being honest, it wasn't all awful. I have all of you. Every Monday since January, the youth seniors have met on Zoom, and it, more recently in person, to talk. And when I say talk, I mean talk. We, have, we are a very chatty group of people. These conversation, conversations helped me get through the stress of college applications and the sadness we all felt while missing out on senior year. They were my anchor in the middle of a wild storm. They helped me to grow. Thank you, Scott, Garrett, Leslie, Grace, Elizabeth, Dan, and Mary, and our special guests, Renee, Elisa, and Matt, Kim, Pastor Ken, Pastor Tim, Pastor Karen, and Pastor Greg for that special time together. I hope that it was as meaningful for you as it was for me. As I look toward the future, I have many questions and concerns. Will I succeed alone at college? Will I pass my classes? Will I make friends? Will I genuinely like my roommate? What about my professors? There are so many uncertainties. The quest I question whether my faith will remain strong. Will I connect with the people at my new church? I guess what I'm really looking for is some sense of security, some reassurance that everything is going to be all right. And I refer to the scripture from 2 Timothy 1.7. For the spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. A pattern is sown through all of these things. God. He is there when I'm a thousand miles from my parents. He is there while I'm searching for new friends. He is there when I feel stressed or worried, and he is there when I need him most. He will not leave me on my own because he gave me, gave us all, his powerful spirit, and we cannot underestimate that. Recently, my ninth grade literature teacher returned to us our freshman letters to our senior selves. Here is a little of what I had to say. 
Always remember to go to church and be active within the church family. Right now, I love going to youth because I have amazing friends and amazing memories with them. Don't ever use the excuse that you are too tired or too busy to go to church. There is always time for God. I'm glad to be able to say that not much has changed since I wrote that letter. I still absolutely love going to youth and participating in all of the church events. As I embark on my next adventure, college, I will take the advice from my 14-year-old self. I will remember the lessons that the youth group and the congregation has taught me. I will continue to grow in my faith and create a new community, sharing with others what I have learned from my time at Aldersgate, because these are the things that will help me to overcome future obstacles in order to become and grow into the person, the performer, and the artist, and the disciple that I wish to be. Thank you. Good morning to all of you. Uh, my name is Garrett, if you didn't know. Uh, my scripture reading uh, is Isaiah 40, 31. Uh, but those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount upon wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be faint. Hello, <laughs> like I said, my name is Garrett. Uh, good morning. Uh, it is so wonderful to be here, to talk with all of you. Uh, we're all very happy to be here, I can assure you. Uh, I would just like to take some of this time uh, to share with you how I have found God through the people of this youth group uh, and how we all helped each other overcome the impossible. Uh, so like many of the youth, uh, I have been here for seven years, uh, but even before that I've ha always had a special connection with the youth group at this church. My brother uh, is a, was a youth member for a long time and we grew up in the church together. Maybe it helped just a little that my dad just so happened to be the youth director, but who knows. Um, I have grown up with these amazing people. Together, we have done things I have never expected to do in my young life. Uh, together, we've helped build houses. Uh, we've fed the homeless, made connections that would last a lifetime, and so much more. My journey through these past seven years has shown me that I find God the most in my time with the youth group. I can vividly recall it. The remember, I remember the closest I ever felt with God was on the last day of our Houston mission trip in 2018. All of us holding hands together, worshiping God after a long day of installing drywall on the ceiling of an entire roof, a room. <laughs> I truly felt the presence of God that night. It was the week after Houston, surrounded by friends and family, and that I realized I had felt the presence of God so much, and especially when I am with people, and even more especially with this youth group. This, as you can imagine, made the pandemic extra hard. Not having the human interaction during this pandemic was very hard on me and my faith. I was lost. There were times I was moving in the dark and I just couldn't find God's light. I was trying to come to terms with who I am and accepting myself, and I still couldn't find my way out. There were many times, and I think we all felt this way during the pandemic, um, I felt just alone. Even when praying, it felt shallow, unconnected. But the Lord finds a way. <laughs> just as the scripture Isaiah 40, 31 says, but those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength they will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. On wings like eagles. I think about that word a lot, those words a lot. That verse is special to me for many reasons. I first heard of it through a gift that was given to me by my confirmation mentor, Tom Conklin. The gift was a plaque that read the verse. Every night, and even still, I would look at it and ponder what that verse meant. And I have found out what it means. It means this, no matter who we are, where we come from, or what we have been through, the Lord will raise us up and carry us through our life and hard times. He will help us overcome. That rang very true during this pandemic. So through trials, tribulations, tears, and a lot of phone calls, 
the Holy Spirit managed to work through us, and we found ourselves graced by each other's presence once more. In the uh, winter of 2020 and the beginning of 2021, my dad had the idea uh, for the seniors to meet every Monday uh, for the youth year. Um, we'd all meet over Zoom at 7.30 and talk about, quite frankly, uh, whatever. Whether it was catching up on life, college process, sharing stories, literally whatever. It was always super nice to come home after a long Monday to a group of people that I happily call a family. The youth group friends I grew up with and who will always help me experience the presence of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Especially during our time in person over the past four weeks where I had never been happier to be in the presence of my friends once more and feel the presence of God like I did that night in Houston. These amazing people in the 2021 senior youth group have helped me grow as a person and helped me better accept myself and who I am and maintain my faith in God and the Methodist Church. I plan to continue that work when I'm in San Francisco. Grace, Ava, and the rest of them, they all left. Uh, but if you're watching this, I love you. Uh, I love you, Dad. Thank you so much. Um, thank you all for building upon my journey, which I have only just started, and I can't wait to see where the Lord will take us. Now, I have... <laughs> I have to go grab my guitar. <laughs> the song that we will be singing is called Come As You Are by Crowder. I need a cable. Sorry, Ken, I gotta borrow this. <laughs> Come out of sadness from wherever you've been. Come broken hearted, let rescue begin. Come find your mercy, oh sinner. Sorrow that heaven can't heal. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal. So lay down your burdens, lay down your shame. All who are broken, lift up your.
you. Thank you. Hello. Um, my name is Grace Conklin, and my um, Bible verse that I chose for today is 1 Corinthians 10:13. No testing has overtaken you that is not common to everyone. God is faithful, and he will not let you be tested beyond your strength, but with the testing, he will also provide the way out so that you may be able to endure it. Um, if you don't know me, my name is Grace Conklin, and I am a graduating senior this year. Wow, graduating senior. That feels really crazy to say. I've spoken at almost every Youth Sunday since I was able to participate, always reflecting on the year that had passed, but this speech is different. Writing this, I had to reflect on all the important moments throughout my life and find the most meaningful ones, so I want to tell you my story of overcoming. Back in 2018, my mom and I went on a mission trip to Rwanda to meet the orphans that Aldersgate was supporting through Zoe. The trip was absolutely incredible and we met so many amazing people and learned so much about the Rwandan culture and the ZOE program. After I arrived home that, and that post-mission trip high had faded, very similar to the post-camp high that I'm sure most of us who have attended Lazy W have experienced, I started thinking a lot about my purpose. I started to realize that the people in Rwanda that we met seemed completely fulfilled and happy with the simple lives that they held. A lot of the time that meant farming or making baskets or preparing food that the rest of the town could purchase. I had gone on this trip during the second semester of my freshman year and the pressures and demands of high school and the future were starting to feel more demanding and prevalent. I was starting to really worry and overthink what my purpose in life was going to be. And I think that growing up in a society that constantly pushes our newest generation to achieve the next best thing and never bask too long in the light of success made this even more difficult of a journey. The idea of my purpose was very pressing and I wasn't able to put a finger on mine or why I was even here in that present moment. These thoughts kept spiraling, especially when I would lay in bed at night trying to fall asleep. I wanted to be happy and feel fulfilled with what I was doing, even when it was simple, just like the people we met in Rwanda. But for months, I couldn't figure it out. When I was swimming on a club, I would swim endless amounts of laps, just letting my thoughts spiral to a point of feeling unworthy with the life that I had. I was also trying to do this all alone. I didn't tell my family or any of my friends for a really long time because I wanted to be able to take care of them rather than place any of my burdens onto them. So, overcoming this struggle. My very first step was to always repeat in my head, you are worthy and you are loved. Even if I didn't believe it, the more I said it, I couldn't think any other way. And where could I have learned this? Oh, maybe Aldersgate and my family. And you might be thinking, Grace, you're a freshman and then a sophomore. Why were you having an existential crisis about your purpose? And I would tell you that I'm not completely sure. But once I started questioning, I couldn't stop. I needed to find a way to keep going. So eventually, after many long nights of thinking, I realized that at least for now, I could find my small purposes that I serve every day, like being a daughter and a friend and a student. This freed me of some of the pressure and anxiety that I was experiencing, but the big question of my purpose still held strong at the back of my mind. So one day, my attuned therapist of a mother probably asked me if everything was okay, and I decided to finally tell her what was going on, and she gave me the simplest answer. You don't have to know right now. This simple statement allowed me to understand that my whole life was about understanding my purpose and discovering it. I could feel God placing his hand of peace upon me through the simple words my mom said to me. I believe that God placed us on this earth to do many things in our lives, but the only way to find out what they are is to do them. Another really important thing that I learned during this time was that I am alive to just be me. Nothing that I do determines my worth. My worth is based in my being and who it is that I am. The last thing that I learned in this journey was that I should never suffer through my struggle again trying to accomplish it all by myself. 1 Corinthians 10.13 tells us that God will always give us the tools to overcome any struggle that is set in front of us. He transforms these struggles into building blocks for our growth as people and as Christians. 
but he never wants us to do it alone because he has provided us with support systems to carry us through difficult times. So to end this long speech, I want to thank my incredible support system here at Aldersgate and the family that I have here because this church has grown me into the person that I am. This youth group and group of graduating seniors especially have shaped and molded me into who I am today. Thank you so much for supporting myself and my family through every moment of our lives. You all were there to celebrate the bright, joyful times like when Pastor Linda waltzed me around the sanctuary when I was baptized, and you were also there when we needed hugs and support during the harder and darker times. You were always there, so thank you. Amen. Praise God. Always there. Always there. And uh, we will always be praying for you all, Grace and Ava and Garrett. And I want to lift up a couple songs as prayers for our seniors and for our youth. Uh, this song is Build My Life. And we here in the church always talk about relationships, of how important our relationships are. Ultimately, the importance and the of, of our relationship with Jesus, uh, with God, and, and that is the foundation. And so we pray that this is the foundation that our youth and our seniors now launch out to life uh, with the foundation of their relationship with our Lord. So let's sing a Build My Life. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever bring. We live for you. Jesus, the name above every other. Jesus, the only one who could ever sing. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you. We live for you. Sing together. Holy, there is no Your heart and lead me in your love. 
Sundays are emotional in many ways because uh, we see these kids grow up and then they launch out and we are so proud of them and we are so prayerful for them as well. I know it's been a rough day for our youth director, Scott Wilmeth. I uh, just want to praise God and thank Scott for your love, the way you've nurtured our youth. Uh, and I know that as, as we see them go, we just pray and hope that they will continue to be filled with Christ's love in their hearts. And I love this last line, and lead me in your love to those around me. And that's something that's on my heart is because of the love that's been poured into our youth and our seniors, uh, I know that they're going to be a blessing wherever they go, wherever the Lord leads, and that God's love will just continue to pour out on them. The last song I want to sing is... Um, is invite us to, to just bless our seniors. And uh, so it's called The Blessing. Many of us know this song. Um, you know, there's a line, uh, you know, that he will bless the youth and their children and their children and children, um, and that they would just bless their lives. Uh, we definitely hope that they don't have any children very soon, um, but we do pray that they will have that a blessing in their life and that Lord, the Lord's blessing will continue to flow over generations uh, through their lives as well. So let's join our hearts. Um, and uh, the youth here, you can join in blessing one another as well. Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you. Be gracious to you.
All right. Well, I am going to invite Grace and Garrett to come up and to lead us in a youth benediction, which is straight from Scripture, and it's a, they're going to bless us with a benediction. Yeah. Okay. May, the May the Lord bless, bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.